ilyen, mert én nagyon táskot lehet, ha egy csomó is kivajta. Tuo puhelime ei voisi kaunista. Mä en näe sitä mun puhelin. Mä vedän puhelin Facebookin. Mä otan täällä. Täällä näkyy. Brothers and sisters in Christ, during four Sundays we are visiting holy places in the Holy Land. This is now number three of the four and today we are visiting Galilee. Now let us begin officially this prayer service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Come, bless the Lord, all your servants of the Lord. 
Lift up your hands towards the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth give you blessing out of Zion. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. That uh, this day may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The psalm of the day is psalm number 86. Hear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am devoted to you. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. You are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. In the day of my trouble, I will call to you, for you will answer me. Among the gods that there is none like you, O Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, O Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart, that I may fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uh, the Old Testament reading is, in a sense, connected with Galilee. It is from the prophet Isaiah, end of chapter 8 and beginning of chapter 9, and thing that we all know, uh, chapter beginning of chapter 9, when we, or when we have visited, attended the Christmas service. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those 
who were in distress. In the past he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future he will honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. The people walking in the darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of, of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and uh, the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And the Gospel today is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 4. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he returned to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Jebelon and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah, land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea, along the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people living in the darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has adorned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon and Peter, uh, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing the nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Indeed, today we have our visit number three of the four. We visit Galilee. I think that we all know that Galilee is the northern part of Israel. And I would say, most importantly, around the Sea of Galilee, or Lake Gennesaret, Lake Kinneret. Galilee is the primary place of Jesus' ministry. Here he called his disciples, his followers. This is the place of his teachings and his miracles before then the trip to Jerusalem for, for crucifixion and resurrection. Here you see now a map. I, I hope that your screen is wide enough. There are many well-known places at the northwestern shores of the Sea of Galilee. Magdala or Migdal, the home village of Mary. You can see there Capernaum the Mount of the Beatitudes, Tapka, with the Church of the Laws and Fishes, and many others. 
On the very left, in the middle, is uh, the horns of Hittin. Horns of Hittin. It is not a biblical place, but it is the place where in 1187 the army of the Latin Kingdom was uh, beaten by the Muslim army under uh, Saladin. So it is not far away from the source of the Sea of Galilee. Of course, uh, churches have been built on these biblical places. And uh, you will now see four pictures, four photos taken by myself. The church at Tapka, at the shore, where Jesus met with, with the disciples after the resurrection. The church of loaves and fishes. The church on the Mount of the Beatitudes. And the last picture, the last photo, is a view over the Sea of Galilee. I think uh, that many of you, especially you in, uh, in the U.S., know Father Peter Vasco. Uh, Peter Vasco is uh, president of the Franciscan Foundation in the Holy Land, living in uh, Jerusalem, though born in New York, U.S. Uh, I met with him some 18 months ago and asked him to speak uh, in the first place and then to, to my Finnish brothers and sisters about the meaning of pilgrimages and about being a follower of Jesus. I do not have any video of our discussions, uh, but uh, you will see some photos. Uh, it is uh, both both uh, Father Peter, of course, it is myself and my dear friend uh, Sepo Niemelainen, whom you will see there, uh, those photos while Father Peter is speaking. But the real reason why you're here is to seek Jesus, to walk in his, footstep, in his footsteps. We need that constant assurance, that constant thing that he is always with us. But he's called, uh, he's called the pilgrims here to touch, heal, or guide each one of them. And you're, when you walk in the footsteps of Jesus, when you walk to the place where he was crucified, where he rose from the dead, where he was born in Bethlehem, these are the places by which God wants to touch, heal, and guide a person. So it's a calling in a most special way. And when a, a pilgrim goes back home to their country, they become special ambassadors. Special ambassadors to tell their family, their friends, their loved ones, what God did for them over here. And to encourage them to come and seek the Lord in the land which Christ made holy. Christians have an important stake because of all the three monotheistic religions, the leaders, only Jesus was born here. Muhammad was born in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, and Abraham was born in Ur in Iraq. But it was only Jesus who was born here in Bethlehem. So we as Christians, every Christian, no matter what denomination, we have a stake here in the Holy Land. And always pray, if you have not been to the Holy Land, pray that God calls you. And when you do come here, it'll be a blessed event and when you go back home, the words you've heard, the priest or the preacher speaking about the scriptures, it will come alive. The words will come alive out of the Bible. I was there where he was crucified. I was there where he was born. I was there where he, where he uh, transfigured on Mount Tabor. Uh, these are the places by which 
he wants to touch pilgrims. And I pray that many pilgrims will that be coming will be from him. Finland to seek the Lord so that they too may be blessed like millions of other pilgrims who have come here to the Holy Land. At the shores of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus called Simon and Andrew, James and John, to be his disciples, his followers. This is the point for myself. As the Lord has called those four and others, he has called myself and all of you to be his friends and his followers. That is the Christian life, to be follower of Jesus. Today we continue to pray. We continue to pray after the explosion in Beirut for the Lebanese people, for all who have died and for all their families, and for all those who were wounded, and uh, also for all uh, working in the rescue and rebuilding works. We are continue to pray for those who are victims of the coronavirus COVID-19, for all infected and for all working in medical duties. We continue to pray for peace in the Middle East and elsewhere. We pray for the Belarusian situation and the Belarusian people. And uh, we have heard uh, alert alerting messages from the fires in California, US, and are praying for those who are suffering because of these huge fires. And we pray for uh, our order to carry out its work for all knights and dames, for all office holders on the international level and in the grand priories and the priories and other entities of the order. Let us pray. Now we ask you, Lord, to dispel the pain and heal the sickness of your children all around the world and to grant to all perfect he he health and protection under the sign of your all-conquering Holy Cross. Give us your peace and strengthen our faith in you, Lord, so that we can overcome our fears and doubts when anxiety becomes the order of the day. Bless all those who have put themselves in harm's way in service to you. Hold in your loving embrace those who have perished and grant peace to their loved ones. In the midst of the uncertainty, we echo in faint faith the words of King David. God is our refuse and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Trusting in your infinite love and compassion, 
we exalt and praise your holy name with the Father and with the Holy Spirit now and always and unto the ages of ages Amen and let's, uh, let us now pray our closing prayer for today Gracious and Holy God lead us from death to life from falsehood to truth lead us from despair to hope from fear to trust lead us from hate to love from war to peace let peace fill our hearts our world our universe through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord Amen Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Brothers and uh, sisters, thank you for uh, joining in, in again today. As I have said that, uh, that uh, we will visit four places, holy places in the Holy Land, and this was number three, so we have now visited Bethlehem, the baptism site of Jesus at the River Jordan, and now Galilee. And next uh, Sunday, will be our last visit and uh, earlier I have not uh, told what will be the, our next uh, next place to visit but uh, now I think that it is quite easy to guess it next uh, Sunday we will uh, be in uh, Jerusalem the city of crucifixion and uh, resurrection have a nice week. God bless all of you. Amen.